The TNC is my favorite microcontroller and I use them in almost every project. So what is a TNC? Is it a super small Arduino? Well, yes no, it is. No, it's not. If you've watched Voidstar Lab before, you know I use them in a lot of projects. TNC, another TNC, a TNC, TNC, the TNC, that TNC, the TNC, the TNC. This video isn't sponsored by TNC or anyone, I just really like TNCs. And it's not only because I salvaged 20 of them when my past client threw out an entire run of prototypes that I painstakingly hand-built and I ripped them out in between bouts of sobbing. They're just great parts. They have fast processors, tons of interfaces, a fair price, a diminutive size, and are compatible with Arduino and most of its libraries. So is a Teensy an Arduino? Well, kinda. You see, there are plenty of third-party boards that are actually an Arduino schematic, but have a different shape or a bunch of integrated sensors or drivers. For instance, the Fio is an Arduino Micro with a battery and a wireless socket. The Makey Makey is an Arduino Leonardo going through a man-child phase. And the WTF Duino is a banana-shaped middle finger right in the face of electrical engineering, but beneath the trolling, it's just an Arduino Uno shaped like a banana. You can plug all these into your computer and they'll work with your Arduino software right out of the box. The Teensy is not like these boards. The other boards are like unexpected guests to your house party who look out of place, but once you get talking, you find that they fit right in. The Teensy is a weirdo who builds a shed in your backyard, pops open a beer, and says that because he's drinking indoors on your property, he's technically part of your house party. You see, the Teensy uses a completely different ship and architecture as any Arduino brand Arduino, but through a filthy but easy hack, you can interact and program with it as if it were an Arduino. The Teensies we care about, not you Teensies 1 and 2, use Cortex-based Freescale processors and a proprietary USB bootloader. Most Arduinos use AVR chips and a serial bootloader. In other words, the Arduino IDE can't compile code to run on the Teensy, and it can't interface with the Teensy to upload it. That is, until Teensy Duino shows it do we. Teensy Duino is the secret blend of herbs and spices that makes this module so zesty. The simple installer modifies your Arduino installation to hack Teensy support right up in there. So now, in your tools menu, above Adafruit's saccharine product names, there's your selection of Teensy boards. And holy cow, that is a lot of options. And what does this mean, keyboard languages? What, the CPU speed? Optimization? Ooh, well, stick a pin in it, because we're not even out of the installer. Here's a list of libraries. That's right, the installer also conveniently prepackages like 75 extremely useful libraries right into your Arduino folder, which is actually quite convenient, even if you're not using a Teensy. Uh, all of these libraries are optimized and fully tested to run on Teensy, and many of them were actually modified by Paul Stoffergen, the main guy in the Teensy project, personally. Of course, he also ported literally everything from the Arduino standard libraries to his Teensy boards, and added support for the Teensy special features, and he commented all of it. What a gentleman. Finally, the installer will show us the how-to guide. It's only two steps, and one of them is usually optional. Allow me to demonstrate. It all starts with a sketch. Not a special sketch, but like, you know, a regular one for the Arduinos you already have. We just hit upload, maybe push the little button, and wham, bam, I'm more machine than man. Now it's running 75 times faster. Of course, Windows needs drivers. Because when it comes to virtual COM ports, no OS eats glue quite like Windows. Oh yeah, uh, this will break Arduino's code signing because we're modifying the binary. So Mac OS, which considers users to be the Three Stooges, will refuse to run it. Oh, I'm awful sorry. So am I. Yeah. Instead, you just replace the Arduino app with Teensy Duino itself, which is even more convenient because you don't even need the wizard. Sad wizard. All right, we drilled into the warm, pulsating brain of a living software program and implanted some wetware. What do we get for it? Well, let's look at the TNC lineup. These are the TNC boards that I use most often. There's a TNC 3.2, which is a bit outdated, but still very usable. All TNCs are three volt devices, but this one's pins are five volt tolerant. It also has a hardware DAC, so you can output smooth waveforms without using PWM. This is really useful for audio. This is the TNC 3.6, which has a stronger processor, more pins, and a built-in SD card slot. Finally, we have the TNC 4.0, which is an absolute powerhouse that's stuffed with features. That's the one we are going to look at today because it's the one I would recommend to people who don't already have a drawer overflowing with salvaged TNC 3.2s. 
Now that I have a Teensy and no project in mind, uh, what would you like to see me build with this thing? I will actually make the best idea and make fun of the worst ones in a future episode. So, yeah. If you got the stones, leave a comment. First thing to notice is, this is a tiny doggo. It's just 35 by 18 millimeters, which in American units is real f small. Its length may be short, but it knows how to use it. There are 24 I.O. pins that you can fit into a breadboard, and if you flip it over, you get 16 more. That's 40 I.O. lines, compared to the Arduino's 14. You know how the Arduino has six analog pins? Teensy's got 14. Six PWM pins have 27. This thing's got three digital interrupt pins. You know how many digital interrupt pins the Teensy has? They're all interrupt pins. Finally, Arduinos have a serial port or two, spy, and one or two I2C interfaces. The Teensy 4.0 has seven hardware serial ports, plus up to three more over USB, three I2C buses, three, buses, three CAN buses, also a USB SPDIF, host port, and a partridge in a pear tree. We also get very flexible USB device options, a battery-backed real-time clock, and a bunch of other onboard peripherals that only two people who watch this video will think to use in a project. You rule two people, I do this all for you. Oh yeah, uh, the TNC runs at 600 megahertz! So what does all this power, engineering, and infrastructure cost you? 20 bucks, cost you 20 bucks. The TNC 4.0 is cheaper than an Arduino Uno, Nano, or Micro. Wait, what's that? The high-pitched shrieking of self-important dweebs? Let's listen in. It doesn't have wireless! It's different, and that makes me scared! Well, $20 is too much! I can get a shady Arduino cologne imported from a gray market Shenzhen sweatshop for two bucks fifty! It's not really the smallest board in the market! The smallest? Re... Got it. Those whiny bitches actually make some good points. The Teensy is tiny, but the tiny Duino is teensier. Boards based off Arduinos and Adafruit products are definitely easier for beginners to follow along. NRF52 based boards use less power and have wireless, and $20 is nowhere near the disposably low price of overseas garbage or an ESP8266, no overlap there. So why do I always use them? Well, like an AK-47, the Teensy might not be the best at anything, but it's good everywhere. I can drop a Teensy into almost any project, and I know it'll perform well, work with my circuits, and just be a pleasure to code. And of course, no matter how boneheadedly I design my models, there's probably room to cram a Teensy somewhere in there. Red has gained control. Let's talk about that $20 price point. Yes, you can buy very, very, very cheap clones of popular dev boards, but allow me to explain what you get for your Andrew Jackson. Those ripoff boards are made with the most trash tier PCBs and parts they could sweep off the factory floor. The parts are often under spec fake, or just dead on arrival. The best deals will ship from overseas, so they can take weeks to arrive. All these things feed that horse that I will never stop beating. Delays kill projects. Okay then, so why don't I just buy a knockoff Teensy? Well, that's because the bootloader is proprietary. PJRC locked it tighter than Mike Pence's butthole. Hey man, information wants to be free, but developer wants to be paid. If you want to implement a Teensy yourself, like I did with this smartwatch, I should really make an episode on this thing, uh, you can buy a bootstrapper chip directly from PGRC that's pre-programmed with the bootloader for like, like seven bucks. I didn't mention that. Uh, most Teensy boards put the bootloader on a second microcontroller, which lets you use every single bit of program memory. Also, uh, you can't overwrite the bootloader and brick the chip, which is something that totally happens, but never to me. So yeah, uh, consider most of that $20 a contribution to PJRC. No, not in that half-assed techno-utopian support the creator's way in a socially acceptable, capitalist way. See, Paul and the Teensy Sphere are major contributors to Arduino itself, and the work they do for Teensy Arduino seriously improves mainstream Arduino. You ever plugged in a new board and Arduino automatically recognizes what serial port it's on? Well, PJRC wrote that. You know how when you have two conflicting libraries, Arduino will use the last library it finds instead of the compatible library and cause like a million bugs? No, you don't, because he fixed that. I want to draw attention to all this stuff because many of these contributions are just in the unsexy low-level code that affects everyone, but are just too uncool, technically difficult, or straight up boring for most developers to fix. The open source community just needs more folks like them, and uh, if paying $7 for a bootloader chip means like contributing to that, I, I have a hard time seeing that as a waste. Okay, so you're sold. Or just, you know, pretend you're sold. I'm a hardware prototyping funny man, not Vince the Sham Wow guy. How does one wield such power? 
Well, uh, here are some ideas. My personal favorite use for the Teensy is to make USB devices like keyboards, mice, and MIDI instruments. You can use it to make a joystick, a flight sim cockpit, touchscreen, microphone or speaker, or a combination of those. All of these modes use standard drivers, so the user probably has them installed already and can use the Teensy powered project right out of the box. I like the Teensy 4.0 for machine learning as I showed in my video about gesture recognition on a smart glove. It has enough memory for a fairly plump TensorFlow neural network, and its screaming fast processor does a pretty good job of running it too. Teensies are also your best choice for controlling displays, especially for strips of LEDs. Paul wrote extremely well-optimized libraries for both. This makes the Teensy a really good choice for Burning Man-style LED and video installations, like this Persistence of Vision sphere I helped build at my old hackerspace. Those features and more are why my favorite Arduino isn't an Arduino at all, even though it kind of is, although it's not, but it is. May your clock speeds be high and your peripherals numerous no matter how tight your situation. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit subscribe for more projects, presumably all Teensy based. Uh, check the description and uh, my channel for more Teensy-licious projects, and I will see you in the future.